In today's video, we're going to talk about a very common topic in obstetrics that is preeclampsia. Preeclampsia is one of the components of pregnancy induced hypertensive disorders. The first criteria in preeclampsia will be a persistent BP recording of more than or equal to 140 by 90 millimeters of mercury. So you can take it just systolic or diastolic, it's not necessary, both should be there. The main pathogenesis, let's come to it now. So in the spiral arterioles of the uterus, normally if this is the diameter of the spiral arteriole, during pregnancy there is increased blood volume and blood flow through these spiral arterioles. What happens is there is trophoblastic invasion of the tunica media of these spiral arterioles. This happens in both the decidual vessels and the myometrial vessels. Because of this trophoblastic invasion, there is destruction of the tunica media, mainly the musculature. And hence, these vessels will be slightly dilated. That is, the diameter increases. When diameter is increasing, it promotes blood flow. And there is, uh, when there is increased blood volume during pregnancy, because of the increasing diameter, the turbulence during blood flow will be reduced. Now, if this trophoblastic invasion is abnormal, this doesn't happen, then the diameter remains the same. So less diameter and there is increased blood flow. So obviously there will be turbulence. Once there is turbulence, there is endothelial damage. Now this endothelial damage starts releasing inflammatory molecules, basically the cytokines and cytokines endothelial damage all of these will reduce will really start releasing the oxidative species that is reactive species and they will cause more endothelial damage so it will be like a uh, what cycle it's a vicious cycle endothelial damage causing more endothelial damage because of these cytokine molecules once there is cytokine release endothelial damage these vessels go for vasospasm. Already there is increased resistance and there is increased blood flow. That means this vasospasm will cause further decrease in the blood flow. So this decrease in the blood flow is mainly occurring to the placenta. And because there is decreased blood flow to the placenta, that means the fetus will release, receive less oxygenated blood and that means there will be intrauterine growth restriction because of the hampered blood flow. Now, the cytokine release doesn't occur only in one place. It triggers a cascade and this can occur as a systemic response. And hence, there will be increased sensitiveness of the blood vessels in different parts of the body to vasopressors like angiotensin 2. And that is why this vasospasm can occur in uh, the vasculature of the kidneys and therefore there will be decreased GFR and because of increased resistance there will be endothelial damage even in the kidneys and this leads to the next manifestation called proteinuria one thing you should notice is protein loss will occur in the kidneys in the form of proteinuria and when there is endothelial damage in other vessels of the body there also there will be oozing out of proteins and as a whole concept there will be decreased colloid oncotic pressure in all parts of the body and once there is decreased colloid oncotic pressure this leads to edema that is peripheral edema this can manifest as pedal edema other questions you can ask to rule out edema when you're taking history in these such patients is if their fingerings have become tighter in recent times or when they're wearing shoes if they feel they're tighter or when they're wearing shoes slippers if that leaves marks on their feet after a long time so this is how you ask for history of edema. Vasospasm can occur in other parts of the body and because of endothelial damage there is also increased chance of thrombus formation because endothelial damage forms an important concept of what is called as virtuous triad and this virtuous triad is important for formation of thrombus. This is how thrombo thrombus formation can occur in different parts of the body and one such organ is the brain. So they are more prone for developing infarcts. So based on this one concept of endothelial damage, the whole pathogenesis 
of preeclampsia or pregnancy induced hypertensive disorders can be explained most of it at least other complications associated with preeclampsia will be it can go for eclampsia where the patient will either throw convulsions or will go into coma then there's something called as help syndrome help is hemolysis h for hemolysis e for elevated liver enzymes and l for low platelets so this is a this is the uh, criteria to call it help syndrome or the patient can go into pulmonary edema because of oozing out of fluid into the lungs because of the decreased oncotic pressure and one more thing is the press syndrome posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome which affects the occipital lobe of the brain so patient will complain of uh, blurring of vision sometimes even loss of vision and one more thing is hepatic uh, this hematoma subcapsular hematoma so subcapsular liver hematoma usually presents with severe epigastric pain so that's why when you're taking cases of pregnancy induced hypertensive disorders you should always ask for imminent symptoms that is headache blurring of vision vomiting and epigastric pain to look for if the patient is going for imminent eclampsia or not hope this video was useful thank you for watching